I'm going to be quick on this point because I've just recently spoken about cancer and uh, it's not something that the scientific community wants to look at because the implications are so serious. But it doesn't mean that the questions shouldn't be asked. And so I'm going to play you a quick clip from Dr. Asim Malhotra when he said something that I think is really important. I'll show you a quick newspaper article. And uh, this is something that I will cover probably at a later date in more detail. So I'm just quickly capturing some thoughts this um, at this point. So here, here we go to what Dr. Malhotra said. The fact that we're seeing an increase in cancers in young people. And we know through different mechanisms, and I speak to Retsev Levi, who is the head of the CDC's ACIP committee, we're good friends. The concern we have, we've had this conversation not so long ago, is that there are many people walking around. The question is how many? Who are they? How do we identify these people who are ticking bombs for cancer and they don't know it? Because of whatever effect that, you know, this may be. You know, and I've seen even anecdotally people I know, young people getting cancer, and this is extraordinary, and very fat, rapidly progressing cancers. What can you do about that? Well, um, certainly, you talk about vitamin C. I think that do, it's it's not harmful. In, in most cases, it's not an issue. You take high doses, and you get your vitamin D levels up to in a high range of normal. Probably is going to have an enhanced effect on your immune system, and this is an immunosuppressive effect of the, you know, uh, one of the mechanisms to immunosuppression that increases cancer risk. So I think that's one thing. But yes, the reason why we need to keep making noise and we can't just you know, shove this under the carpet is that until you get a full mainstream government acknowledgement that this has been a public health disaster and that we are concerned about people walking around with cancer that it's going to develop prematurely for them, then we can't have the, the best uh, scientific minds looking at solutions, which means how do we identify these people? What, what do we do about what do we do with them? very important point because this is this is why it's so critical to look at it now some people think it's just about making noise and, and targeting the narrative i mean that is part of what is going on but if this is the case and history tells us when we had the issue with smoking and cancer it was the same situation at that time it was downplayed. There were too many other factors causing it until it could not be refuted. This is like 40 years later. But the damage had been done. We saw the same thing with asbestos. There wasn't a clear link. It was raised, I think, in the, again, in the 50s. It wasn't actually banned, certainly in the UK, until 1999. So we have this history of overlooking inconvenient issues but then it comes at the detriment of society generally. And this Daily Mail article about um, this study, shocking study linking COVID jabs and cancer censored by mysterious cyber attack. And um, they were just looking at this paper that appeared in the journal Onca Target on January 3rd, and then it was taken down um, or it was blocked so that people couldn't see it. And it's important. So luckily, I then went and found the paper. And as always, once I get a paper like that, I then download the PDF. So I have the permanent version. It's not dependent on what somebody else is, is thinking. Um, in this paper here, this is what caused all the confusion. Um, it was done here. These are two, uh, two people who are based in the United States. And all they did was that they they looked at the fact that there were a number of peer-reviewed publications reporting diverse cancer types appearing in temporal association. That means close to COVID vaccination or infection. So it's important that it could have been either. And so what they did is they did a literature search from January 2020 to October 2025. They found 69 publications. And so they just looked at it to see whether or not it was what we call hypothesis generating. Is there enough evidence there that says, you know what, we don't know, but there's a signal here that shouldn't be ignored. And that is the critical question that was raised from the paper, because you couldn't know for certainly certainty what was the cause. But what seems to be happening is that because of the implications, it is being systematically ignored.
as I said, history tells us that that is an absolute red flag and will cause us problems um, down the line. And uh, when I look at the paper, here are just some of the breakdowns for the, the kind of cancers. Lymphomas stand out um, in all the studies. Almost 40% of them are lymphomas. Others are 15.9%. Um, as well as and just general carcinomas. So you can see that diseases of the blood seem to be standing out as, um, as quite relevant. And so one of the questions is then, is this about spike protein exposure or is it some other mechanism? Now, my feeling is that it's some other mechanism. And here's a reason why. And it's because when they looked at the paper, when we look at the causes or the associations from the publications, when you add it together, 56% plus 25% is 80, over 80% 80 or 81% are based on the mRNA platform. AstraZeneca 17%, GNJ 8%, and then a scattering. If this is correct, maybe there are more publications about these. Moderna, I, I, I don't know why there would be. Maybe because Pfizer was used most broadly across the world, it could see it would have a higher uptake. But whichever way you take it, it strongly points to the fact that this is not just spike protein related because you would then expect AstraZeneca did have a relatively high uptake as well early in the pandemic. So you would expect to see a pattern there, which you don't. My view is that the concern I've always had, there are two things that stood out, and in the link is in the description for a course I did over two years ago, looking at what I expected to be an explosion. Um, and the, the reason was because of two things. One was to do with mRNA, um, uh, the, the fact that you have to get past the cellular immune response in order for the proteins to be made. And so I had always thought that, you know, that could be a risk in and of itself. Um, additionally, we know about what we call, there are certain immune cells called macrophages where they can become epigenetically imprinted, where they are locked into position. And so if you found that happening in specific kinds of immune cells that are supposed to um, suppress or end up promoting cancer, you can then see that kind of um, pattern. As I said, some people will tell you that this is purely speculative. There is no signal really about cancer. This is the trend. This is why I'm doing it because I then went and got the data. So you, you won't find this data anywhere else because I happen to pull it from multiple hospital episode statistics um, that's publicly available. You just have to do the work of trying to pull out the information. And when we looked at for colon cancer, you can see that this rapidly accelerating trend up to 2025 doesn't look as though it's going to stop. This is where it was pre-pandemic, a drop when nobody was going into hospital. Then you have a expected higher level, but you would have expected it to come down again. It has shot off in a different direction. So we know something is happening. The point is, is that there is as yet no clear signal as to the cause. And I can accept that. And it means we can't necessarily speculate that it is. But what I don't accept, what I don't like, is people saying that there is no evidence, so therefore it shouldn't be on the table. That is unscientific, it's um, illogical, and in my view, irresponsible. When you're looking at science and you're looking at medicine and the public is at the forefront of your attention, then nothing is off the table until you understand the cause. And this is what this is why I keep on talking about it, because I think the public needs to, as I said just yesterday, ask harder questions. Don't just accept a narrative just because somebody tells you it's microplastics you know, more sun exposure, eating more, you know, why would it do this kind of trajectory immediately after the pandemic? That doesn't make sense. It could be infection that's causing this, and it could be other factors as well. Let's keep everything on the table. This is how I view it. This is how it should be viewed in my 
estimation and you have to keep pressing the buttons don't let anybody get away with saying there is no evidence of because the research has not yet been done that's where it is and so we're seeing a pattern we need to understand why because real lives are at risk i don't even know how we would fix this but at least if we acknowledge it as Dr. Malhotra said, the best minds can focus on it and try and find solutions. Thank you. A hero, an immune adventure. Coming Heroes, your lyrical guide to the body's defenders. Now on Amazon. Check the links below.